Hello my fellow Airsoft nerds, it's been a while since I've done a video, obviously the last one I did was on the Spear. Uh, I've also uploaded the full live stream from when I featured on the November Foxtrot podcast. Be sure to go check that out, we speak about a lot of stuff including GBBs, MWSs, all kinds of stuff, history. Go give it a watch, it's an hour and 30 minutes, but if you want to pick up some information, there's probably going to be something in there that's going to be relevant to you. So we're going to get this Spear LT off the bench today. Because it's New Gun Friday, shall we say. <laughs> and uh, I've picked up another GBB Airsoft replica. And uh, yeah, as you'll see here, it was one of the replicas I said I wanted to pick up. The Discord has gone crazy with people joining it. So thank you very much for that if you're joining from the YouTube channel. Get involved in the Discord. It's a forum for talking. We sometimes jump on and do live discussions as well. If we're on gaming, anything like that. But I did mention in one of my videos that I would like to get the Lithgow Arms F90. Now, this is a Lithgow Arms F90 replica from KWA. It's GBB. It's basically a fancy org, is the, is the easiest way I can put it. So there's going to be features on there. Um, I have had dealings with gas blowback orgs before. I've had plenty of uh, hands-on time with the GHK. But wasn't really that impressed with it to add it to the collection. It was just a bit meh. Um... So a guy jumped in on the Discord, he put this up for sale on the Discord marketplace um, and straight away I snapped it up. So these guns are running about £500 retail here in the UK. It's what I paid him. It's a brand new gun. I haven't got the box here just because it's boring box, nothing in there. But uh, it was the, a brand new gun with an extra mag, which are about 60 quid. So I saved 60 quid. Uh, so it's 500 You sent it to me. Thank you very much, Keith. And this thing is phenomenal. So I've took a day just to have a play with it. And when I say play with it, just test its semi-response, the full auto, looking at gas gas efficiency. And this thing is an absolute pile driver. It is really, really good. Um, so for all intents and purposes, this is a gas blowback airsoft rifle. It's manufactured by KWA. For those of you that aren't aware of what Lithgow Arms is, it's an it's a style org, but a fancy style org. This just so happens to be, if I'm correct, the standard service rifle for the Australian forces. Again, put it down in the comments if you know better than I. Um, so it's going to see similarities with an org, but there's differences with obviously the trigger guard here, the rail setup, and a few different things. You've got like a, a bolt release and such, which I haven't seen in an org before. So um, it's a brand new replica to me, manufactured by KWA. The magazines are. You've got a metal lower, I imagine a metal upper as well, but this shell here feels like polymer to me, it feels like plastic. Very weighty mag, um, and what I can do, because I'm going to get asked the question, so let's get ahead of the curve and weigh this sucker. So we'll just let the scales zero out. Let's get a couple of mags, so here's a GM P mag for an MWS. Comes in at 346 grams. Do we have a MWS mag? Yes, we do. So a standard Marui MWS mag. I don't know how much gas these have got in, so take it with a pinch of salt. Standard MWS mag, 469 grams. And the KWA F90 mag, a whopping just shy of 600 grams. So, you know, half a kilo, well, well over half a kilo per mag. So it's a, it's a heavy one, but it looks really well constructed. So that's what we want right now. Um, these are actually really easy to fill. So I have got propane in there. I don't know how much is left in there just because I've been playing around with it, but it'd be a good test on how this thing works. Um, super easy with KWA mags, especially this one. You just pinch your thumb and your forefinger over the, the lips like that. And we're just going to plunge the rounds straight down. I do see a few people on YouTube getting bent out of shape about this. Now you can, I think one guy was going, you know, he could he could fill mags like this and he was using, he might have been using a KWA, I'm not too sure. Um, you can't do something like that with a GMP mag or the MWS mag, it won't work. But because the opening is much wider on these KWA mags, fast filling fun. Great, we don't need an adapter, we can fill it super quick. An adapter would make it a little bit more, so you don't have to use your thumb and your forefinger. But there's not that much tension there. It's only 30 rounds, so enough said. So the Lithgow F90 by KWA 
it's got a two stage trigger much like any org so um a slight pull will fire semi-auto and then a full pull will fire auto now i have seen a lot of um reviewers airsoft reviewers on youtube doing this and when they're trying to fire semi-auto um they, they're accidentally going into full auto and i, I don't know and at first I thought, right, that's going to be an issue with this replica. Um, they do have a little switch on here, which, you know, if you, as long as you've got a nail handy, you can pull it down. It, it locks out full auto, which is going to be good for CQB. Um, but when I'm firing it, the trigger is actually really intuitive. Um, so you've got a bit, bit of, like, smush there. But a real nice, let's pop the semi little detent down. A really nice re the reset is exactly where the break is this trigger for a bullpup yeah it's squishy it's not like you've got a solid wall which you're not going to get with this type of system anyway but the trigger is actually one of the best bullpup triggers i think i've ever come across so you know half pull for semi long pull for auto you do have to pull it quite far to get to fire auto i'll try and demonstrate it in a minute charging handle on the left hand side you can lock it up into battery by pulling it back and pushing it up. With the orgs, I'm not sure what this button does. Um, you sort of good nerds, get down in the comments below, tell me what that's all about. Um, you can put a mag in and you could like very much HK slap this. Um, don't know, looking at the parts, they're not they don't look super durable to be constantly doing that, so I'm gonna be kind of cautious with it. But what's nice against older orgs is when you're you know, let's say you've wrapped the bolt, it actually folds up, and I can't remember any other ore replica doing this, but it's really nice because it gets it out the way and it locks it in place. Now, let's say you've fired a full mag off, and I can demonstrate this, this unique feature it has. Let's say you've charged the rifle, you've fired a full mag off, the bolt's locked back. You don't actually have to touch this handle again. You've got a bolt release, which I haven't seen on an ore before, which is super cool really long barrel the inner barrel i imagine is going to be short let me just have a look yeah it's very short i would i hazard a guess that the inner barrel somewhere around here just by looking through it um let's see i've actually got like a little loading rod here we can use that as a crude way of measuring it let's shove this down the barrel to one side oh my god there so the inner barrel is in line just with the front of the charging handle. So you do have, you would have a long barrel with this anyway. So you're coming from about here and it stops here, which is probably a good thing um, because I imagine running a super long inner barrel like that, especially being a bullpup, they have the benefits of having longer barrels compared to standard AR type rifles. Um, if they'd have put the inner barrel all the way to the end, I imagine the FPS would have just been absolutely ridiculous. So a lot of companies are doing this now, including like some Maru with the MTR-16. Um, shorten the barrel, reduce the FPS. Now, the one idea I did have for this Lithgow Arms is I did want to reduce the outer barrel size. So as nice as this looks, I think it's gonna benefit me, especially I wanna take as much advantage of that bullpup setup as possible. I think I'm gonna try and machine the barrel down we could do it to here first see how that gets on that's probably a nice little size but you know there's actually a model that lithgow arms do the real manufacturer where they do shortened barrels and they look look really cool so you've got a funky section in front of the trigger bear with me we can actually push this forward and it's a little plastic cap and that's where the um, dedicated grenade launcher for the F90 would go. Um, doesn't really serve purpose on this. Not sure whether they'd probably look at doing some kind of airsoft accessory grenade launcher. That would be cool if they did. You've got Picatinny right at the bottom here. Nice little small section for a, a grip. Perfect sort of placement. It is quite comfortable holding it on this curve though. So this, this grip here is actually really comfortable, especially for me. You've got a long pick rail on the top here for mounting all kinds of optics. Short dots, red dots. Red dots and magnifiers, put some irons in there as well. There's loads of real estate up here. And then you've got a rail on the opposite side, which this one has um, rail covers on. Let's just take that off there. 
the rail is actually not too sharp on this so it's not bad at all so got round the side there for tack lights lasers pet boxes whatever you want to call it um so yeah you do have a bayonet lug on the barrel which i'm sure is you know probably not on the real one let me know in the comments if you want me, want me to shorten this and we can get rocking we've got a sort of spinny sling swivel i have seen videos of these spinning as you fire the gun and we've got a normal style swivel on the back here not sure whether you can change this onto the side that'll be something i have to look into as with other orgs you've got this little blank in place so if you are a left-handed shooter you can take this off switch it to the other side and uh, it just pops in place like that the safety for this rifle is just situated here again exactly the same as an org and the takedown pin is just found here so if we push this bar in not trap me uh, thumb there push that in you have to be careful because it is kind of under a little bit of tension the first time i did this it shot off and then we can pull it out now what's great about this is not only are we pulling out the barrel set which there's your hop up you've got a nice little rotary style adjuster there which is great it also pulls the bolt out and if we pull that we can slide the bolt assembly out how cool is that nice and quick I'm not sure what style of rubbers these take. I'm hoping they take a VSR style rubber because I would like to swap it out. You've got really nice bulky components on here. We've got um, a lot of the magnet. Get onto the magnet. We can see if we've got any steel components on here. All the magnets I've set to one side for this very purpose. And uh, now I can't spot them. So if I spot it, I'll, uh, I'll give it a test. Um, let's have a quick look for you actually right today folks is going to be crude magnet because i don't know where them little ones are gone if you spot them on the bench put it down in the comments below but just got a training weapon moment here what i'm going to use so we've got a steel bolt there for the barrel this is all aluminium which is to be expected we've got some steel hardware including the sling point all aluminium here the bolt i also imagine is going to be aluminium because it's super light but we do have some steel components on the back there. The bolt actually seems really, really well manufactured. Um, it's really smooth. So hats off to KWA for that one. Um, steel sling points. And then we've got more aluminium. I'm not going to pull the rear of the section of the gun apart today. It might be something we do in the future. If you want me to do that, let me know down below. So super easy to take apart. We can take the bolt out. Apply uh, our lubricants, whatever you want to use, and get it back together. So we literally just slide it back through these holes. Super easy and intuitive. I imagine it copies that from the real one. And then we take the stock and make sure that pin is pushed through. These always used to get lost on the Maruis and the JG ones. <laughs> it was the most in-demand in part for a while. Pop that back in and we're good to go. really is a good trigger so we'll cock it again see how much longer that is a trigger pull so we've got semi-auto and then for full auto you've really got a mean to go into full auto so i don't know how these reviewers are doing it how their trigger finger works it just doesn't make any sense i've been testing this over the past 24 hours and I just can't see how they would do it accidentally unless they're just they're just not as uh, I don't know, not as much experience with these things. I don't know. I have no experience with ballpups, but shooting a lot of uh, gas blowbacks. I mean, the trigger. Let's just just take my word for it. The trigger is very good on this replica. So let's get to crowing this bad boy. I've got some point threes in here. I'll top off the propane. Yeah, it's pretty much full. Don't get any more in there. It is quite chilly, warm in this room, but you know, mild outside, sort of like seven, seven, eight degrees ish. So we can push the mag in. We'll flip this over so you can see. It's very difficult because it's quite a long gun, even though it's a ballpup. I might have put it in with too many BBs in the mag, so let's take that out. I did jam the mag full, so just be careful with that. 
Usually with GBV mags, um, you'll see this probably won't compress yet, which is a problem. If you are filling it all the way up, I imagine I've put like, oh, there's the magnets. God, a bit too late. You can always, if you're just concerned, when you fill a GBV mag up, and this goes for any GBV, just pop the top round out. And I'll probably prove this now, see if it proves my theory. Put the mag in now, and it charges, see what I mean? Now we could hold this up, so it's not like we have to hold it there. We can lock that back if you want, and then put the mag in. There's loads of different manual of arms you can do for this F90. If you want, if you wanted to do a sort of a HK style slap, and we've got one in the chamber. Chrono time. Is this going to be warm? So, 0.3 gram BBs. Do semi-auto. So 1.2 to 1.3 joules. 1.37 joules. So yeah, it's the uh, the short, definitely short in the barrel to keep that under control. Now when I first got this, I don't know if I've worked the gun in or anything, but yesterday when I was shooting this, I was getting bang on a joule with 0.3. So I don't know if it's settling now, parts are working, a bit of lube getting here and there, and it's freeing up things. But you know, average 1.2, 1.3 joules. Um, it would be a perfect setup straight out of the box for any kind of like DMR roll you wanted to do if you wanted to disable the full auto. Now, I don't know if I'm going to be able to show you this, but so we've got semi, and I can rapid fire this without going auto. And then let's do a burst of auto, see what it's like. It's, quite, it's telling me it's about 24 rounds a second. I'm not sure that's completely right, but this chrono does not like um, doing RPS tests on gas guns just because it, it, you do get a bit of gas spit. Um, it always seems funky, so literally throw that figure out the window. So we dump the mag on full auto. It's locked back. We can do it again. And this gun, like I say, I've been playing around a lot with it. It's the first, <clears throat> like the GHK was okay. Um, after you'd used it for a bit, it seemed like the gun, the guns tended to, to want to wear out fast. This, however, feels super solid. Now, the lips, even though they look quite thin on the sides, they feel really sturdy. They only hold 30 rounds, so it's not like you're jamming a ton of pressure in there. I would perhaps just a peace of mind for me. I mean, I know the, the real org mags do have like a polymer, um, like a shiny polymer finish. Now me just being me, um, it's just, it, to, to my eye, it sticks out because it's really shiny compared to the rest of the gun. And you could literally just strip this mag apart, dull this down either with a bit of black spray paint or I'll probably Cerakote them like a graphite black. Cause I'm not really bothered the way, about the way the, the mags look. Um, it's just, it seems strange to have them glossy. So I imagine these are gonna go in a lot of M4 pouches. I can't see there being much issue. They're only a slightly bit wider. And they're the same kind of length. So I imagine that's gonna fit a lot of M4 pouches with you guys that are running ARs. Um, so yeah, this is my new acquisition. I said I wanted one. I got one a lot sooner than I thought I would. Um, there are some other bits and pieces I would do wanna add. Um, I think Kadebway did do the Tavor, which I do want to have a bit of a double with that, and the Masada. Um, there's all kinds of great GB replicas coming out this year. VFC are working on an AK, which does look solid, so I might give that a look. Um, the Vector, a lot of people have been asking me if I'm going to get a the Crytac Vector, and, and no, I'm not. Um, I had my doubts of that platform. And then I was actually watching Explosive Enterprises video. Go and watch that video if you uh, if you haven't seen it already. And the the Super V system, they've really copped out on it compared to the KWA. And just the whole way that they've gone about it, I just don't feel like it's a good. I don't feel like it's a good enough product for me to purchase. It just seems really lackluster. Now the KWA Vector, I thought the KWA Vector's sale, like after like used sales, were going to drop off when Crytac released their stuff. If you got them KWA Vectors, boys, hold on to them, because I'm telling you now, in all my experience and my opinion, the KWA 
is better than the Crytac from everything that I've seen. And that's why I won't add it. The KW had a proper V system, the way that it worked. It just seemed all in all a better gun and they perform great out of the box. So we might see those prices still increasing over time. Let me know what you think of this first overview of the KWA Lithgow Arms F90. I like it. I've got two mags with it. I'll probably have to get some more. They're not cheap mags. If you buy them in the UK, they're about 60 quid a pop. Get them replaced like WGC for about 46, but you do have to cater the, the bullshit tax when it lands in the UK if they do get uh, stopped. Thanks very much for tuning this video. And as always, from me and Bench, thank you very much for watching. Stay tuned for more stuff. I've got loads of stuff to record. And we'll see you in the next video.